Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Number 90, I think. Wow, what a waste of time. 90. <laughs> I've done 90 of these. Or would have done. Oh, that's my squeaky chair. Andre's here. He's just run into his bag. Uh, I think it's a case of he can't hear me quite as well when he's in his bag. I think, I'm sure he heard something. He said something like, I don't need to fall asleep that badly to have to listen to you drivel on. Which is rude. Very rude. Uh, I only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Please subscribe and uh, only listen to this or watch this when you can safely close your eyes. Although you won't be watching it with your eyes closed. But it's just a picture, well, it's not a picture, but it's a video of a candle flickering. I actually spent, what did I spend, about an hour and 19 minutes filming that candle. And I just uh, cut the video down to size, to suit whatever the size of the the audio recording is. So yeah, it's... Uh, giving you a little bit of the behind the curtain scenes of the magic that occurs the magic of technology and candles so the idea of this recording and all the other let me bore you to sleep recordings is that I talk to you in a way really I'm just talking at you and the idea is that your mind starts to switch off and drift and you fall into a nice beautiful sleep through complete boredom of listening to me and the good thing about this is I can repeat what I've already said before because that's all part of being a really boring person is to tell the same stories. So I could actually tell you word for word exactly what I said. Shall I use the word ver verbatim? I could verbatim. So that would have like... I wouldn't have had to say the word for word or exactly what I said. Just said verbatim. It's a shortcut, isn't it? Anyway, I could just regurgitate. Or, mm, what if I just uploaded the same session every day, but just with a different date? You know, call it 91. So I could upload today's recording as 91 and the the 7th of, or the 6th of February, 2019. I could do that. I've been quite bored myself today. I do waste, uh, well not waste, but I, sp I spend and have spent many hours working on my website over the years. I've probably spent more time doing that than anything else really, I suppose, over the last 13 years. Well actually, I've been working on websites since 2000, so it's... What's that? Nine, 18, 19 years. 18 years. No, no, 19 years. Including... Is it 18 years? I always get confused with this. 
So 2000, is that classed as a year, isn't it? 2001. So 2000, that's one. 2001, that's two. That's where it gets confusing. Because I start, because I, I think of it as 2001 being one, but then 2000 is also one, isn't it? Because I spent the year doing it then. Realistically, probably the end of 99. So the last decade. Um, so 2000, year 2000 was the first year I was involved in websites designing or building. I'm going to say building because my, my design technique was never... Um, never going to win me any awards it was more just learning how to do it I don't know even why I got so interested in it I don't really don't really understand what happened there but it was 1999 so 2000 is the first like official year I say official, it wasn't official at all, it wasn't, there was no kind of ceremony uh, starting the process, uh, you know, so it wasn't like documented legally in any way, but so 2000 was the first year that I was learning to make websites. 2001 was the second year so that's two years 2002 so that'd be the third year 2002 is the third year I'm counting on my fingers because I always find it's easier than my toes I can just I've got more flexibility with my fingers my toes just kind of they're very stubborn. They kind of just want to do their own thing, you know. You know, my fingers are really. I don't know. I find that my hands quite obedient. Probably the only part of my entire body that actually has just given in to my dominance and just does whatever I say. But my feet and my toes are very much. You know, we're free. We do what we want. You can't tell us what to do. You can ask us. You can ask us. It's fine. Ask away. But don't don't come in with that attitude of being in charge. You're not in charge of a sponge cake. That's their favourite saying, my toes, telling me that I'm not in charge of a sponge cake. What does that even mean? So 2000, 2001, 2002, so that's three years. 2003 is four years. 2004 is five years. So that's the first hand done. 2005 is six years. 2006 is seven years, 2007 is eight years, 2008 is nine years, 2009 is ten years, 2010 is eleven years, 2011 is twelve years, 2012 is thirteen years, 2013 is 14 years, 2014 is 15 years, 2015 is 16 years, 2017, no, 2016 is 17 years, 2017 is 18 years, 2018 is 19 years. So yeah, if we consider 
2018. So it's been 19 years since I first started to learn how to build websites from the core. I don't mean I drill to the center of the earth. I mean from the core of learning the HTML. Uh, we're actually at the time, at the time, it was just called HTM, and then they added the L, and I don't know why. And I think they started adding like X and XL and things like that added to, to it, but. Yeah, up until 2000 and probably five, I was still building my, web, my own websites. And then I just started using online website builders because it was easier. And now I kind of never want to build or have anything to do with websites ever again. I <laughs> just can't be bothered now. Because it's the amount of time I've spent on them, promoting them, building them, designing them, rebuilding them, redesigning, and all that stuff. That, yeah, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to let that go. Just focus on what I do, which is this stuff although yesterday I say yesterday actually it was today it was early this morning I made a recording for lower back well for, for chronic pain but it was for lower back and I was quite pleased with it. But it's something that I don't quite understand. I do, um, psychologically, I do understand it. It's like the sleep sessions are my most popular things that I do. Maybe it is because I'm truly the most boring person that ever existed. And you're just lucky enough to hear my interesting stories. And therefore, I've, I've found my niche, as it were. I've, I've found a way to, uh, I don't know, contribute to the world in you know a potentially useful way by just talking however the deep sleep whisper did you hear that Just start scratching at his scratch thing. He's really winding me up at the moment. He's misbehaving, really misbehaving. Earlier on, I just went outside to put the bins out, and this week was the white plastic bags. So it's the recycling stuff has to go out this week. Next week it will be the black bin bags. And it's every other week. So they alternate. And before, I don't know how long ago, probably about six months, maybe longer, maybe a year now. Used to be able to put the black bags out every week. Because a black bag contains all the dirty, pooey, you know, the the stinky rubbish, garbage, or whatever you want to call it. 
but in the council's incredibly wise brain they decided they only collect the black bin bags every two weeks so they'll leave the the garbage to ferment and to stink the place out for two weeks is that a clever clever little monkeys they are and last week I put all the white bags out I say white bags they're kind of see through uh, recycling bags and I put them all out but it was the wrong day I actually thought it was recycle day last week but it wasn't it was black bag day so they still came in and took the black bags from out the back but of course they left the white bags in the front and I put the white then I I didn't put the clear bags back into the place where they shouldn't be anyway they shouldn't really be in the the thing downstairs because that's for the black bags but like it's cupboard it's a cupboard thing so I went in there and I put the I put all the white bags back into the cupboard that was in the evening but this time this time last week no it wasn't it was Wednesday evening last week now I just remember because someone one of the neighbours asked me if I was alright and I said yeah and she, but I wasn't really enjoying the process and uh a little bit like today, it's like I think, am I the only one living here? I'm the only one that's putting the the, the white bags out the front. I know I'm having a moan now, but I don't mind. I'm allowed to moan. Do I want? Do what I want when I want. Put it where I want, how I want. So it's. So I did that. So I put all the bags out. So hopefully they'll take them. And then I go into the cupboard. And it's even got all this carpet in there. Where did this stupid carpet come from? And the, 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 the cupboard downstairs. It's just for the black bags. That's it. For the rubbish. So I. Moved the stuff out. And chucked it in another part of the garden. I'm not <laughs> so I'll probably I did do that of course if if the if the council lis is listening to this it weren't me it was the aliens that abducted me and they sent down a a clone of myself with the sole purpose Of cleaning and sorting out the dustbin cupboard. They spent thousands of years creating me and travelling across the galaxies just for that one purpose. Does Wendy still exist? The reason I ask is for those that live in America. And I've probably woken you up now, and you thought, oh, I was having a nice sleep, and now you, oh, you woke me up by talking about Wendy's. <gasps> oh. See, these, these record, recordings aren't just about falling asleep, it's also about company, it's about relaxation, it's about letting go of stress and anxiety, and all that rubbish stuff and just relaxing for an hour or so at the very least and it can also allow you to just get bored and fall asleep it can also help you to sleep at other times so if you're listening to this in the afternoon 
because you've got a spare couple of hours and you're listening to it then when you do go to bed tonight maybe it's 10 o'clock maybe it's half 10 maybe it's 11 maybe it's quarter past 11 maybe it's 12 I don't know when it comes to that time you'll just drift to sleep easy naturally Just as I was talking there, my television started making a weird noise. And I don't know why it does that. It doesn't do it when it's on. By on, I mean switched on. And. But when I turn it off. Probably 10, 15, 20 minutes later starts to make some weird noises like like cracking sounds I don't know what that's about because I turn it off at about 8 o'clock this evening and the time now is uh Yeah, it's 48 minutes past 8. So it's been off for 48 minutes, pretty much. It might be 47 minutes, might be 46. Because I did spend a few minutes looking on the... uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the TV guide on a remote control going through the TV guide to see what uh, television programs were available to be viewed uh, this evening. So my plan, my plan is when this recording is finished, I'm going to watch Superstore which is on at well it was on at 8.30 on ITV 1 no ITV 2 but I'm going to watch it on ITV 2 plus 1 which means it will be on at 9.30 so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to watch it at 9.30 on ITV 2 plus 1 and I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that I haven't really planned that far ahead but I know that I was watching EastEnders which I haven't really watched until I watched it last night Monday and it's on at 8 o'clock in the evenings on Monday but today it's a Tuesday and it's on at 7.30 till 8 so I've watched it two times this week and I haven't watched it for about a month previous I guess I suppose Christmas time or you know yeah that kind of time so I I don't know I'm thinking of maybe I'm going to start watching it again I sort of seem to have caught up with it doesn't take much to catch up with a program that's been on for 30 odd years it's doesn't always move that quickly to be honest it's uh, I can dip in and out of it and I watched that tonight finished at 8 o'clock and I don't know why I don't know why but I had a surge of 
don't know, I don't want to use the word energy, but uh, maybe a little bit of energy to go and do some washing up, which is what I did. So, because I did some washing up and then I put some stuff in to soak and I washed it up probably in a couple of hours and then I put a few more bits in to soak and then I can wash that up maybe tomorrow once I'd finished washing up I thought well you know finished washing up the ones the bits that I'd sort of started on uh, it's mainly pans, mainly saucepans, because I'd I had boiled potatoes two days in a row, not yesterday, but the two days previous to that, I'd had potatoes, and I don't remember what else I had with them. But there was only a few potatoes left, so it was only those small, and I cut them up to make them even smaller, and I left the peel on them, and just boiled them. And then I had some sweet corn, but it's frozen sweet corn, so when I do, when I um, have the frozen vegetables, I've got quite a few like different ones in the freezer. I bring them to the boil and then I take them off the boil. I don't I take them off the the hob or the fob or the wob or whatever you want to call it, you know, the that circle of heat, the hot bit on the top of the oven. I take it off completely and put it so it's cool and just leave it like that until I'm ready to eat the food then I drain the water off which is quite difficult with sweet corn because it's so little the bits are so little but I think one of the problems with you know if you, you've got frozen sweet corn bits but if you've got it in a tin or a can, you've got the juice that comes with it. And that's quite nice to have that juice in with your dinner, the sweet corn juice. But when I boil it, the frozen stuff doesn't really, it's not really the same. And I think what I had, I think both days I had the same meal. I had a piece of, a piece, not a piece, a piece of fish. So fish, potatoes and sweet corn. And I think I've still got two pieces of fish left, I think. I've got at least one piece and it's very unlikely that they're going to sell packs of three so I'm guessing it's probably four in a box I know I said pack just then but box, pack uh, but it's in a box I'm just going to have a little drink Mmm, that's nice. So yeah, I don't know. I'd that's so that's why I had the saucepans. One of them or was it two of them I had water uh soaking the saucepan. Because I'm not one of these people that leave stuff to get you know and then 
expects myself or someone else to clean a saucepan that's rock hard with food stuck to it. You know, saucepans need to be soaked. You know, sometimes for a day, depending on how, you know, coped they are. Coked? <laughs> Coated. Coated they are with food. I'm not an expert on... You know, saucepans and the etiquette behind uh, cleaning saucepans. However, I did used to work in kitchens. I worked in catering for quite a few years on and off. So I've worked in a lot of kitchens and quite often as a washer upper or a kitchen porter. And see, being a kitchen porter is okay with part of the job, I always found. I liked the plates. I quite liked the spraying off of the food and putting everything into a, a dishwasher or like a plate washer. So I quite like that, and then rinsing it, you know, having it as a rinser. So I think, I wonder, because I had this job when I worked, I was, I was probably, thirteen possibly, and I had this job in a restaurant as we didn't call it kitchen porters back then it was just a washer upper and that's what I did a dishwasher and you used to it was basically just the plates and the cutlery and getting them ready for new servings you know so as you went into the restaurant because there was two doors I think there was two doors one that went in and one that went out yeah that would make sense unless there was just one door I think there was two one that went in and one that went out so people that were holding food could walk through and not get the food knocked out of their hands which is you know a good place to start really and so as you went into the play. I mean, it, this wasn't the only entrance into the kitchen, but this is an entrance. And as you walked into the kitchen, basically straight ahead was where the the dishwasher ex uh, section was, because that's where the uh, the waiters used to, or waitresses as well, used to put the dirty plates, you know, the plates that were from the customers that had finished eating. And when I say dirty, I don't mean dirty, dirty, but they, so for example, I'll give you an example. So someone might have, uh, let's say they had a roast dinner and person might be sitting in the corner of the restaurant and just you know no particular reason why they're there but they might be there with a friend and they might not have seen that friend for so you know quite some time and they're just maybe catching up on what's happened recently with each other 
and because they haven't seen each other for so long they start to realize that they've got nothing in common anymore so they revert back to talking about the past things you know what they did together when they sort of were in the same area and they spent time with each other and they managed to reconnect through reliving the past so it's kind of a no longer really a friendship but a nostalgic meeting and so they're there talking about uh, chucking sponges at penguins or whatever they used to get up to and one of them maybe was called Tom and the other might be called Derek and Derek says uh, how are your potatoes Tom and Tom says yeah potatoes are nice but you know what I like most of all and Derek says I don't know Tom what is it that you like most of all Tom and Tom says I like Yorkshire puddings the best Derek and Derek said oh do you Tom well to be honest Tom I also like Yorkshire puddings as well but they're not my favourite and Tom looked at Derek and he said questioningly questioningly so Derek if Yorkshire puddings aren't your favourite then what are he said well roast potatoes are my favourite oh and Derek said oh and then Tom said remember those penguins Derek said yeah and he gave out a big hefty whore of a laugh a big whore of a laugh he gave out and they both cuddled each other Derek nibbled on Tom's left earlobe and they just chatted about the penguins and the times they used to have whilst at school during geography lessons and it's as if the food just ate itself they were talking so much and laughing and giggling taking turns to hide under the table you know just general adult things that we all do and they realised that they'd come to the end of the food and that the plates were not empty because there was still still a little bit of leftovers a bit of debris you know a bit of uh, I don't know what the right word is what's the correct the correct term for Just a bit of stuff was still on there. Because I remember sometimes I'd... I'd pick up a plate, because I'd be in the kitchen. I'd pick up a plate, and I'd look at it, and I'd think... We don't even serve that. There was stuff on plates, coming back from customers' tables... There's stuff on there that we didn't even serve. So we don't serve sausage rolls. How can there be how can there be a remainder of a sausage roll when we don't serve sausage rolls? We don't serve false teeth. How can there be false teeth left on a plate? We don't serve them. We stopped that last year. 
They were just too popular. Couldn't keep up. Couldn't keep up with the trend. <laughs> then Derek and Tom they'd finish their dinner. The waiter or the waitress would hobble over and say, "Have you finished?" Have you finished with your food? And uh, Tom would say, yes, yes, thank you, waiter. And Derek would say, yes, thank you, waitress. They both figured that one of them sh would be right. And the table, you know, the, the plates were taken away on a tray sometimes. Sometimes, no tray, just taken away in the hands. Not in the ha in the hands of the person, the waitress or the waiter. Their hands, not just some random hands. The wait the waiter wasn't holding hands. That were then holding like these big giant hands that were holding the plates like little pegs. On a clip on hands, that'd be silly. So, and then the waiter or the waitress, let's say waiter for example, because there probably wasn't any waiters working there, I think it's mainly waitresses at that time. And they'd walk in, walk past a few of the other tables, because you can't, it's difficult to get to one end of the restaurant without the to the other without walking past uh, the various tables it's because uh, there's people there so you can't just walk straight through and just walk over the table because not all the customers appreciate that plus it's difficult to stand up on unless you've got a spare chair that just happens to be there so if you've got a table for four, but only two people are actually sitting there and the chair is nicely aligned, you could stand up on the table, you know, on the chair, then stand on the table, walk across the plates. In fact, you don't walk on the plates while people are eating. You don't stand on people's plates when they're eating. It's rude. It's rude. Then you can step off the table and onto the net, you know, another chair and carry on. But to be able to do that and walk in a straight line, it's very unusual that that would work, you know, that everything would line up just so that you could just walk in a straight line over all the different tables and, um, I don't know, not disrupt any anybody. Or anybody's meal. It's very much like a. What is it? Some of the. The lunar stuff. The loony stuff. That happens. Every hundred years. Like. Um, Halley's Comet. As an example. Bill Haley. That's why Bill Haley in the comets. Do you reckon his name really was Bill Haley? You know, Bill Haley and the Comets. I used to like listening to him. Because when I was a kid, I was probably... about five, probably. Maybe six, five or six, five. And I was living with some nuns. And I was living in South End. And it's a, it used to be a seaside town. There's still a seaside. I mean, the sea's still there. Hasn't packed his bags and left. But the visitors packed their bags and didn't come back. You know, in a sense of it's no longer a big 
holiday destination that it used to be. Just like Clacton and uh, Black Port, Port something. Where is it? Not Blacksmith. There's a place up north that's really was really popular. I mean, it still is quite popular, but it's none of the the holiday destinations in England, the seaside destinations, are as popular as they used to be. Since like air travel and you know cheap holidays abroad and stuff like that. Blackport I can't think of the name it's near Liverpool and it's it's kind of like the entertainment I suppose it's like our Vegas you know you've got your Vegas uh, was it whatever stays in Vegas stays in Vegas Blackpool that's it Blackpool so it's you know it's got I think they've got casinos but it's a very it's a very popular uh, destination for holiday makers and to go and see shows and things like that. I only ever been to Blackpool once. And that was back in nineteen no two thousand and four. So I'd have been about 33 at the time. Yeah, I'd have been 33. And wow, I'm 48 now. 15 years ago. You think in 15 years I'll be a pensioner? I'll be 63, be nearly a pensioner. Although I, f I won't be because I think 70, I think 68 or s I think I've got 20 years left before I can collect my pension. 20 years plus, I'm not sure. And I'll still be doing this, I'll still be sitting here. I like to think that I'll have a, a different chair by then. I'll still be just talking absolute nonsense. And so, yeah, I went to the Isle of Man with family. It's the it's the first time I'd actually been anywhere with family since I was a kid and it's the last time I'll ever go anywhere with family ever so it's, it's like a one-off opportunity really so I went with my dad uh, and my nan was there as well so there's a few of us and well, it's four of us and then I met up with my auntie who lived at the Isle of Man or on the Isle of Man and we were there for I don't know just a few days but it was really nice I liked it it was yeah it was it was tiring all the travelling Especially going there because as we travelled up, the the weather was it's very windy. It's a very windy day, but to the extent that the the ships that we were going to be getting from. I don't know where we were getting the ship from. But anyway, it was cancelled due to the weather. So we ended up travelling further all the way to Liverpool. 
and we had to wait around for a while but eventually we did get on a boat it wasn't too bad I don't think I don't know I've not really had problems with seasickness or anything in the past so it's all I know is I had to get away from the family and just be on my own and just because you know, I spent hours in a car with them and which is fine it's just it's just a long a long journey very long journey and we were travelling all night so we were travelling all day in the car and then all night on the ferry and then we actually when we got there it was like 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that and I really needed to sleep really really needed to sleep yeah that's not the only thing I remember about it I remember one of the evenings I know I know why it's called the Isle of Man very few women live there and I'm not even joking and if I was it wouldn't be very funny very few women I think I saw two women the whole time maybe four so I don't know why why that is the case But I remember there was one, it was Saturday evening, I guess it must have been Saturday, and we, I was sitting there, I think my dad, my auntie and stuff, they, they went out to the pub. And I wasn't drinking in 2004. I hadn't had a drink from the beginning of 2004 all the way through to the end of 2004. Didn't have any alcohol at all. And so going to the pub didn't really seem a lot of point. And I was sitting there with my nan. And I was basically not looking after her but just keeping her company. And I was watching Top of the Pops. This is interesting. Why would Top of the Pops be on on a Saturday evening? Unless it was a Thursday evening. Because Strictly Come Dancing was on. At the same time. But Top of the Pops used to be on Thursday night, or perhaps I think Friday night at one point, but never on a Saturday night, as far as I'm aware. But then, isn't Strictly Come Dancing on BBC One? so is Top of the Pops so that makes no sense the reason why it makes no sense is because I was watching something it was a music program anyway and all the way through it my nan was moaning oh it's not as not as good as Frank Sinatra Oh, 
what's all this this noise, what's all that noise? It's like it's just a commentator, it's a person that's introducing introducing the show. Where's that? Why is that lovely man not on there? You know, the nice young man that that used to present that show where yeah, Jimmy Savile, he's not young anymore. He's done a lot for charity, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Why don't you wear <laughs> wear clothes like him? Maybe you get yourself a girlfriend. I said, well, I've got to do have a tracksuit that I could wear, but it's, uh, I don't know. I like to wear trousers, really. I like to try and be kind of smart. She said, you're getting old before your time. Be like Jimmy. Stay young. Stay fresh. So Nan, just can we leave it? You know, it's, things aren't always as, as they may seem. What do you mean by that? So well, maybe I am still quite young. I mean, you know, you're I'm a lot younger than you. Oh, that's just rude, isn't it? No, I don't mean it rudely. Just factually. She kept going on and on and on about the music being rubbish and she doesn't like the rubbish music and where's the dancing? Why don't they do ballroom dancing anymore? Like on Strictly. And then she kept going on and on and on about how, how wonderful Strictly Come Dancing was. And in the end, I just said, there, switch over. And I went into my room and went to sleep. Well, I didn't go to sleep, but I had a an angry nap. I think that was the first time I ever, didn't have an argument with her, but got wound up because I didn't want to watch Strictly Come Dancing I sometimes think that I might be destined to never be with anyone ever again because I don't like dancing and I know that if I went to a dancing, uh, either dancing lessons or dancing classes or some kind of dance nights, I'd be meeting women every week. You know, some that, who knows, some might, might like me. But I don't like dancing. I don't. There's not. There's very, you know, as I say, not even one inch of me that likes it. Maybe there's a few inches that. that I don't know. That there's not. I just don't. I don't see the point. And as far as dancing, a slow dance, it's not about dancing. It's about touching the person and being close to them and holding them and having that human contact which I can do just as easily without music and an audience and dressing up I don't think it's... I'm not scared of public 
affection. I just don't like it. <laughs> no, I don't mind. Not really into dancing. Some people really like it. I used to volunteer at this place in town and they had a, a monthly Latin dance thing. I think it's monthly or every two weeks and people would go along and it was so obvious why they were there. I'd say probably 30% of the people there were there for the dancing because I love dancing. Maybe 40%, maybe 50%. But there was uh, quite a few people there that it was like uh, like a nightclub kind of mentality. And the men would come up dressed so smartly they put a lot of effort in. And I suppose you think about it, with dancing, you don't have to have a personality. We don't, not, you don't have to <laughs> um, express a personality. Don't have to make someone laugh. Don't have to tell them anything or pay compliments. Doesn't matter what you sound like because you're just dancing. And if that's the level of, if that's the entrance exam into a woman's heart, you know, to dance and to pass that test, then I won't be turning up for the exam. I'd rather just flunk, flunk it and get a zero. I did date a, a lady. She wanted to go dancing. I was like, why? We're already together. Like, we're already together. What, uh, what have I got to impress you for? she didn't understand because once you're with someone once you're in a relationship <laughs> it's, it's going to go down well isn't it you haven't got to do anything else have you it's just <laughs> you no longer have to make an effort isn't that the kind of whole point of it <laughs> I think one of my favourite parts of being in a relationship is sometimes it's when I'm not with them. Just that break, you know. So I had a girlfriend, she had a couple of kids and I think I looked after the kids while she went out to a nightclub. Kids were in bed. I was downstairs watching TV, watching a movie, or I think I was watching Elvira. And uh, it was so nice just to relax. And another time I was out in a nightclub and you know, I phoned her before I went out and it was so good to be out and not care about meeting anyone new. I'm going back about 20 years, but 25 years, 23 years, the person I'm thinking about. Anyway. This brings us to the end of this session today.
goodbye. I'll speak to you next time on Let Me Bore You to Sleep.